Howdy, all you delicious people. I am here today to review the pilot episode of The Gifted. This show is on Hulu right now. You can go and check it out. I would say that this is yet another coming of age. Hey, guys, you have powers now. It's a show where we have... I would say the Mutant Registration Act being put into fray, where it seems if anyone is to display powers, they are to be collected. I would say overall, for this show so far, and what from what I've seen, I would say... This show has a kind of cheap approach to the X-Men way of going about things. Instead of having gigantic robots to come and collect these mutants, the Sentinels are actually just security guys. They're just agents of sorts to go and collect each one of these mutants or each one of these gifted people because when looking at it at one point mutants were trying to be changed to be called miracles or gifted or some other bizarreish like name that these people have been called mutants for decades, so why adjust the name now? <laughs> why adjust the, the name? It makes no sense. They've been called mutants for far too long. So, I would say from just the pilot, I felt that even the pilot kind of felt like it was stretching a lot. But I do like the fact of the setup of this show. I like the fact that we get very familiar with these characters. It, we feel like they are setting these people up the correct way for us to invest in them. A lot of times you get people with powers and you have no clue what their powers are. Right away within this show, we get to see what powers people have, even though there's some characters here and there where I'm like, well, does this character have Magneto powers? Does this character have so-and-so powers? Does this character... What exactly is their power? So, but other than that, I'm having a good time with the show. I'm trying to say, okay, on a smaller budget spectrum, is this a good show? Could I be okay with the show? And I would have to say yes. I think the spider angle that we get towards the end of this episode, I was like, mm. <laughs> really? So you can't have robotic sentinels, but you can have spider things. Oakley doakley. I thought that that was a little absurd, but it is what it is. So, if anything, if people aren't aware, I have been seemingly reviewing a ton of superhero stuff lately. Incredible Hulks, Misfits, all kinds of stuff. I don't know why, but I just enjoy the superhero genre, and I'm going to get even into other movies and other shows and see where that goes see where that leads me so 
Speaking of which, let's lead into the spoiler variation of this show. So, we... I'll kind of tee it up a little bit. We get two different sides of the coin with this The Gifted show. We have a family that otherwise finds out that their kids is quite their kids have mutated if that's even a word to justify whatever and we also have a a seemingly team of people who are already mutated and are are already gifted and are trying to survive, are trying to resist what is going on with the mutant kind. So, basically, in one episode, that's what happens for a bulk of this. So, let's get into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this episode. So, we have here a girl named Blink, who we find out has the ability to teleport herself. And while she is trying to escape from the authorities, from the Sentinels... We have a group also that is tracking her down. We have seemingly a character named Polaris. We have Thunderbird. And we have also uh, Eclipse that are tracking Blink down. So... When eventually these three characters conveniently meet up with Blink, they start fighting it out, showcasing every little bit of their powers, showing Polaris, hey, we're, or showing Blink that, hey, we're just like you. So we end up having Polaris using her powers of, of grabbing upon metal, we showcase Eclipse's fire-like power of sorts that seems very bizarre, and Thunderbird is just a tracker. He seems to be, I would, I think he reminds me very much of Warpath, I think, that was in Days of Future Past. But anyways, so, we have... Blink going, oh, okay, well, I guess I can go along with these mutant, like, people. So she goes along with them to make it to this vehicle, but we have it to where this security guard ends up tasering Eclipse, which has Polaris gets in full-on anger mode and uses her power to recklessly try to take down this sentinel character, this security guy, police, whatever person, and that ends up costing her getting, I believe, tased as well and taken. But Eclipse ends up going with, the, with his group and leaving. Because they can't go back for her. They're outnumbered. So... We have, and I thought that this was really interesting. In this one episode, we have a Stan Lee cameo, which I was blown away about. And we also have the X-Men theme song used as a ringtone for Eclipse. So, we... 
have it to where Blink is talking to Eclipse and Eclipse is asking Blink, hey, like, what is your power range? So we have we have Blink who is to showcase that she basically needs to see where she's going or whatever is to be teleported won't be teleported properly. Kind of like the Nightcrawler situation where Nightcrawler says, well, if I can't know where I'm going, I could accidentally teleport through a wall. So why take the risk? So we have it to where Reed Strucker is to go and talk to Polaris talk to her about her abilities and we end up finding out how strong Polaris really is. She tries to take out screws from Reed's leg because he had gotten leg surgery and there's like screws inside of his leg. So we get to see how thoroughly in depth Polaris's powers really is and I thought that that was fascinating. And we eventually get to see some range of Polaris's power. But anyways, Reed ends up going, hey, are you, can you work with us? Are you going to work with us? And Polaris is like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn my friends in. No, this is not going to happen. So Reed is like, ma, well, that's too bad. I'm going to go home and find out that my, both my kids are mutants, but I'll see you later. <laughs> that's not actually what he says. It's just what ends up happening. So we have it to where we have Lauren and Andy who go out to a a dance and both both Kate Strucker, Lauren and Andy all sit down and have a family meal together. And talk about the mutant X gene and everything about it because it seems Reed it seems to be really tied into this and knows all about it. So we have Lauren and Andy after this conversation is over end up heading to this dance or this party or this whatever at school so because they are to talk about <clears throat> excuse me they are to talk about whether or not they're going to the dance or if they're going to have a date and so on and so forth so we have them go to this said dance and we have andy ending up getting bullied being taken to a locker room, and Andy ends up using his power, which I would say would quite possibly be like a Magneto power, like he is uh, shoving people into lockers, stuff is flying everywhere. It seems that the auditorium or the place of which that this dance is taking place is starting to come undone, seemingly. So... Lauren makes her way to Andy, and we find out that not only Andy has powers, but Lauren also has powers. She has, like, a Sue Storm, like, protective shield-like power. And so I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Because really knowing Strucker and knowing full well he is a person that is trying to incarcerate mutants come to find out his family is mutants so we have these two kids coming back home tra la 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 to have both the kids having to confess to their mother hey just letting you know we're both mutants how's it hanging <laughs> because lauren has to confess that the school was really in shambles and Lauren was protecting Andy the entire way to make sure that they were able to get out of there. So 
we have the Sentinels just knocking at the door of Kate. And so we have the security guard guys just basically coming on in and just like, well, I'm going to get these kids. So, Kate, I'm just going to shove you out of the way because I want to get to these kids. I need to collect these kids desperately. So the mother just gets chucked out of the way. The Sentinel guys come in and they're like, yeah, we're going to come in here and get these kids. And so Lauren uses her power to block them. And so they are to scramble outside of the house to just make their way to get freaking out of there. So while that is going on, we have Kate who is having to call Reed desperately. And Reed is like, what the heck is going on? Huh? Did our kids get attacked by mutants? And Kate's like, no, our kids are mutants. And Reed is like, oh my god. Well, luckily for me, I'm the one guy in the middle of all this that can be able to know exactly what to expect. So we have Reed calling up his co-worker to say, hey, yeah, I just found out that my kids are mutants. Could you give me some information about the the bad mutants? Maybe whatever information that you have on them, on them. Maybe a phone number that they can be reached. And <laughs> weird, I know. So we have it to where Reed gives uh, Eclipse a little jingling and says, hey... Can you help my my uh can you help my kids out? Can you give them safe passage? It seems that they are going to go over the border to Mexico to try and try to get to where there's a place where mutant laws are a little bit looser. And so we have it to where Eclipse is like, "Sure, but how would you get this number?" But on top of that, like, I'm a little skeptical about... So, we have it to where Kate and Reed make it to this diner, and they are to have their kids there, and we have this family regrouping, and so... Reed makes their way to to making it to these eclipse eclipse and the mutant people. So we have it to where the Sentinels and the security and all those people they make it to where this location is too, and Eclipse is just like, dude, did you? Did you, did you, do you rig this up? And Reed's like, no, like that wasn't me, man. Like they just figured out a way. So we have it to where now Thunderbird is opening a door saying, come on in, man, let's scramble. So everyone is scrambling. They're running for their lives. The Sentinels or the Sentinel security guys are running their way to get to those people. But they unleash these robotic spider-ish like things that try to take down Thunderbird, but we have Eclipse that tries to use his power to fry this thing. And so they are all scrambling, and of course Blink is with them. And so, if anything is to go horribly awry, or if they are to be backed in a corner, then Blink is going to get them out of this. So, we have it to where, eventually, yeah, they are to be backed into a corner, and so, Blink has to use her power. And so... 
what I'm assuming is eventually going to happen within quite possibly the next episode is I'm quite possibly thinking that they're going to have to break out quite possibly Reed Strucker and Polaris maybe in the next episode because what ends up happening is everyone starts to go one by one into the blink hole but eventually Blink starts to weaken with her power. And so we have it to where Reed ends up getting shot with some kind of, I think, tranquilizer dart to knock him out. To not have him be able to get into the Blink hole before it closes. So we have everybody into the other hole onto the other side with the exception of Reed. So everybody gets away. There is no security guys. There is no problems. It's just what is going to happen with Reed now? Is he going to be arrested? What is going to happen? I don't know. We will see within the next episode if people are interested in this series or in this show. I just wanted to do this just to one I wanted to see Polaris because I really was interested in this character, remembering full well that this is yet another Magneto kid out of the numerous kids that Magneto has spun and spurned and whatever. It would be kind of interesting to have had in the... In the WandaVision show, that would have been really interesting if Polaris would have showed up on that show. I think a lot of people's minds would have been blown to just been like, whoa, because <laughs> this is this was a Fox thing. They could have pulled Polaris from that show and been on this show. I don't know if Polaris died at the end of that show or I don't know what happened to that character, but I thought it would have been interesting to have Polaris on WandaVision to have some closure of that character. Because I think the the Gifted show was a Fox show, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that would have been interesting to have Polaris on the very tail end of WandaVision. And to go full circle in, well, yeah, Wanda, you lost a, you lost a brother, but you gained a sister kind of thing. So, and you could have had Polaris and Scarlet Witch just teaming up. Wouldn't have that been cool? Towards the very tail end of that episode, or tail end of that show, to just say, hey, this is going to be the future of this show, to have Polaris and, and Wanda teaming up. But, yeah, it is what it is. So, I... I would say that I'm... I'm optimistic about the show, but I'm also very cautious about it because I did not hear a ton of stuff when this show came out. Because when, honestly and truly looking at it, there were, I think, way too many mutant whatever kind of shows out there, like Mutant X or uh, stuff along those lines. Where you'd have people that are t like Legion, all kinds of X-Men shows that were kind of at the very bottom of the barrel of stuff where I was just expecting them to have like the cheapest power possible to be showcased on a show. And that just kind of got annoying for a while. But... I, I don't know, I could see this show really getting interesting, but we'll see. When watching this show, I could be more optimistic about it than I probably could of a Runaway show, where the show Runaways did not make sense to me at all. I was like, man, this is a mad scramble of bizarre stuff. That from episode to episode, I was just like, man, my man, my brain is just ugh with this show. So, with that said, I think I am going to get out of here. 
optimistic yes thumbs up for this first episode because there has to be some kind of budget restraints for this show so i'm gonna get out of here goodbye everybody bye everybody